y'all doing? My name is Kevin Brown, and you watching Bedtime Stories. And we're going to have a good night tonight. I already can feel it, dawg. Because I got on a good shirt. One of my favorite artists is a Kodak Black shirt. And we got a good book for y'all. It's called Hope for Hades. And I got to admit, I know I don't supposed to do it, but I did it again. I cheated, and I read the books before I read it to y'all. My bad, my bad, dawg. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, I did it. And I gotta let you know, this book is a special one. So, go get your brother, your sister, your snacks, your dog. Sit down, get comfortable, because we about to read Hope for Haiti. Come on, y'all. Hope for Haiti by Jesse Joshua Watson. When the earth shook and took away my neighborhood, I thought I would never be happy again. Welling filled my ears, dust filled my nose, tears filled my eyes. I helped my mother build a new home in the soccer stadium. One piece of tin, six posts, three sheets. Many people have come here to make shelters. Some kids wander around lost or wait in line for water. I am too small to compete for food that the blue hats are passing out, so I sit and watch strangers speaking different languages quickly pass boxes towards the front of the line. In my new neighborhood, people lie in the shade of tarps, many of them injured. When I see a girl kicking a ball made of rags, I remember how we used to be happy playing before the earthquake. Can I play? I ask. Sure, she says. We juggle the ball trying to keep it off the ground. Other kids come running to join us. Now we have a game. I forgot about my hunger as I dribbled the ball through the two defenders and passed it to a teammate. We keep the ball moving quickly between us, like a dance. I shoot the ball between two piles of sandals and jump into the arms of my teammates like I seen them do on TV. Both teams burst into laughter until an old woman shushes us as she passes. This is no time to laugh, she scolds. There is too much sadness here. As she walks away, a man nearby says, Don't worry, children. It's not your fault. She has much to mourn, and she does not understand the power of this game. The man grins and starts dribbling our ball. So, any of you been to a game in this stadium? Several children nod. I smile and say, My father took me to a match here. We had a picnic with green papaya salad. And he bought me a soda. Seeing those players made me want to be a soccer star when I grew up. I remember watching Mano Sanin, Haiti's most famous soccer player, score goals on this very field, the man says. He was just a city kid just like you. No different. Well, maybe Haiti used to be good. But Brazil is the best team in the world now, declares a boy. We can't win anymore. Just look at our stadium. The man picks up our rag ball and tries juggling, juggling it on his knees. The rags are soaked with mud and keep slipping from the rubber bands that hold them together. Listen, I must get back to help the others, he says. But before I go, I would like to give you kids something. He ducks into his shelter. When he comes back out, he's carrying a ball, a real soccer ball. He hands it to me and turns to go. It's an old ball but in perfect condition. There's a signature written on the ball, but I can't read it. A boy looks closely. It says Mano Sanin. All the kids gather close to see. Wait, I call. You can't give us this ball. It's signed Mano. We can let go of the past, the man tells us. Right now, we need to think about the future, and the future is you. I put my arms around the man, and the other kids all swarm him with hugs. Thank you, mister, we all say. Don't thank me, children, he says. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me why there is hope for Haiti. We return to our game, playing better than ever. I pass the ball to my teammate who traps it with his chest, then flicks it over the head of a defender. As I run for the ball, I am no longer barefoot and wearing torn shorts. I am wearing the Haitian uniform and the stadium's packed with fans screaming out my name. I beat the defender to the ball, spin around, glance at the net. With the Brazilian team racing towards me, I take one more step. Shoot and 
go. The end. Another good book down. This is a good book right here, man. It had a message that I feel like even adults can relate to, you know, because I really felt this. Like, the lesson of this book was probably never lose faith. And if you don't know what faith means, it's really never stop believing that something good is going to happen. You feel me? Because we got to think about it. If it weren't for thunderstorms, we wouldn't even appreciate the sunshine so much. So it's always going to be bad times. But you got to have faith to know that the sun will shine again and you will have a good time. It will be a good day one day. You know, like I told y'all in a, in a previous video, I think I told y'all about patience. Patience is one of the most important things in the world. And faith and patience go hand in hand. So just because something isn't happening right now, just know that one day it will get better. So, yeah, I appreciate Jesse Joshua Watson for writing this Hope for Haiti. What did y'all learn from this book? Did y'all learn anything? If you did, put it down in the comments because I need to know. I need to know what besides faith did y'all learn because I want to learn some more too. I always love learning. That's another thing I want to teach y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with the book, but never stop learning. You're never too smart. It's always something out there that you don't know. So, I'm going to let y'all just go right now. I ain't got too much to say. This book, it kind of put me at peace because it, it made me think about some stuff that I got going on in my life. That's crazy. You a kid and I'm an adult and we both can relate to this book. That's why you know it's a good book. But, I'm going to go to bed. I got to think about some stuff. This book got me thinking. So, I'm going to leave y'all with the note. And that's be cool, be true, and be back tomorrow. For another good book. I hope it's as good as this one, because this one really touched me. Peace out. Yo, yo, how y'all doing, man? My name is Kevin Brown, as you already know, and I appreciate y'all for watching Bedtime Stories. But I got something even better for y'all. I got a four week course called Finding Purpose Through Art, where I teach your kids, ages 10 through 14, how to find their purpose while also learning how to write books. I wrote six books myself, man, and writing changed my life. It helped me understand myself and dig deep inside myself and find things I didn't even know were there. And I want the same for your kids. And also, at the end of each course, I'm offering the chance for your kids to publish their own book underneath my company for free. This is a kid named Michaela Rickerson. She took the course, she passed it, and she wrote a book. Now she's getting paid. So if you want to get involved, click the link in the bio, and that's it. It will be all